Hi, welcome to another Biomedical Engineers TV video. In this video, we will look into biochemistry analyzers. We will look into the principle of biochemistry analyzers, the components of biochemistry analyzers, and types of biochemistry analyzers. Let's look where it all began. The autoanalyzer is an early example of an automated chemistry analyzer using a special flow technique named Continuous Flow Analysis, or CFA. Invented in 1957 by Leonard Skaggs, Ph.D., and first made by the Technicon Corporation, the first applications were for clinical, medical analysis. The autoanalyzer profoundly changed the character of the chemical testing laboratory by allowing significant increases in the numbers of samples that could be processed. Samples used in the analyzers include, but are not limited to, blood, serum, plasma, urine, cerebrospinal fluid, and other fluids from within the body. The design based on separating a continuously flowing stream with air bubbles largely reduced slow, clumsy, and error-prone manual methods of analysis. The types of tests include enzyme levels, such as many of the liver function tests, ion levels, for example, sodium and potassium and other telltale chemicals, such as glucose, serum, albumin, or creatine. Before we look into the principles of biochemistry analyzers, first we will look into Beer-Lambert's Law. Lambert's Law stated that the loss of light intensity when it propagates in a medium is directly proportional to intensity and path length. Much later, August Beer discovered another attenuation relation in 1852. Beer's Law stated that the transmittance of a solution remains constant if the product of concentration and path length stays constant. The modern derivation of the Beer-Lambert law combines the two laws and correlates the absorbance, the negative decadic logarithm of the transmittance to both the concentrations of the attenuating species and the thickness of the material sample. Now let's look into the principle of a biochemistry analyzer machine. An automatic biochemical analyzer utilizes this kind of reaction and converts the quantity of a specific substance in blood into an amount of color change for measurement. The analysis method of measuring the amount of color change is called the colorimetric analysis method. The origin of this method is quite old, and the shading of colors was originally evaluated by the naked eye. It is a method that has been used since the age of alchemy. The automatic biochemical analyzer has automated the sequence of operation processes which used to be conducted by hand and evaluated by eye or using a spectrophotometer. In the past, the samples for analysis are the pale yellow liquid portion of blood called blood serum and urine. A certain precise volume of sample, normally 30 microliters, is collected by using a dilution pipette and diluted by five times using a dilution disc. The measurable sample is 150 microliters. From this dilution sample, a precisely measured amount of 2 to 25 microliters per test item is transferred to a reaction cell. The mechanism of the colorimeter is to shine a light through the sample being measured and then electrically detect the amount of transmission. The measured data is indicated numerically using AD converters, or analog digital converters, calculated by a CPU and the results are output. Machine offers high dispensing performance of sample and reagent, reduction of residual water to the minimum, Due to a cleaning mechanism for the outside of the pipettes and measures to eliminate residual water in the reaction cells, and acquisition of good accuracy measurement data. The dilutions may change according to the manufacturer specifications for different instruments. Now let's look into the components of a biochemistry analyzer. Major components of biochemistry analyzer machines are the sampler, proportionating pump unit, dialyzer assembly, constant temperature module, flow-through colorimeter, and recorder assembly. Let's look into the sampler first. This module holds the batch of samples awaiting analysis in separate cups on a circular tray which is rotated at intervals. A probe connected by plastic tubing to the proportionating pump enters each sample serially. The volume of sample aspirated is determined by the pumping rate and the adjustable dwell time of the probe in the sample. As the probe movement into the sample cup was slow, the volume aspirated varied somewhat with the depth to which this was filled. The transit time between reservoir and sample is short. The next component is the proportionating pump unit. 
This module determines the relative flow rates of sample and all reagents and replaces the use of different sizes of pipettes in manual methods. The pumping technique involves the peristaltic action produced by a series of rollers passing along an array of parallel plastic pump tubes. Each roller compresses all tubes so that the rate flow in each tube is proportional to the square of the pump tube diameter. Color-coded tubes with a range of nominal diameters and pumping rates are available in three materials. The next component is the dialyzer assembly. This module achieves the separation of small and large molecules by allowing the former to pass through a semi-permeable membrane from the donor, or sample, stream of liquid and air bubbles to a recipient, stream of liquid again segmented by air bubbles. The dialysis rate depends on the temperature, but complete passage of small molecules into the recipient stream is rarely achieved and may be only a few percent of the total. The analytical process then requires that a constant fraction should dialyze, and this is not always the case when simple aqueous and protein-containing solutions are compared. It is important to ensure that the two streams flow in the same direction. Care must be taken to ensure that the output from the recipient stream is one which enters the remainder of the analytical system. If the sample stream is greatly diluted, the difference may not be seen easily. The next component is the constant temperature module. It is to maintain the reaction mixture at a constant temperature for a defined time to bring about the required chemical change under controlled conditions. The incubator bath consists of a glass delay coil mounted on a thermostatically controlled oil bath. This is sealed and stirred constantly. Most baths are set at 37 or 95 degrees Celsius, but some have adjustable thermal regulators which allow operation up to 120 degrees Celsius or even higher. The next component is flow-through colorimeter. The colorimeter is to measure the intensity of color produced in the reaction and to provide a graphical display of change in color with time. The use of double-beam spectrophotometer is costly and is rarely justified by analytical requirements. The single-beam color meters have insufficient stability to operate reliably over a long period required. The auto-analyzer MKI color meter combines double-beam operation with interference filters to select the wavelength. And last, but not the least component, is the recorder assembly. The servo-potentiometer recorder is used to record the ratio of the responses from the two detectors, and these responses are proportional to the intensity of light reaching the detectors and to send it to the CPU for analyzing data and display the results on the device. And last, Let's look into types of biochemistry analyzers. First, we'll look into a semi-automated biochemistry analyzer. Semi-automated biochemistry analyzers work based on two measurement methods, optical techniques and electrochemical techniques. The working is similar to that of the fully automated biochemistry analyzers. The main difference is that semi-automatic analyzers are more practical for use in smaller laboratories and medical practices. This is due to it being able to handle a lower number of samples at a time as compared to the fully automatic one. For this, the samples and reagents are not pre-prepared and stored, but set up separately each time a test is conducted. That is why it is semi-automatic. Though this slows the process of testing as a whole, it has a great benefit as it provides tremendous flexibility when the type of tests differ, making the reagents vary each time. The second type of biochemistry analyzer is the fully automated biochemistry analyzer. Fully automated biochemistry analyzers measure the concentration of certain proteins, enzymes, electrolytes, metabolites, or even drugs in the provided samples of urine, blood, serum, plasma, or other bodily fluids. The machine consists of a tray where the samples are loaded to be tested. The tests are programmed either by the barcode scanner or manual entry. Once the tray is loaded with a sample, a medical dispenser collects a certain amount of sample and sends it over to the reaction tray. After this process, a certain amount of water rinses the dispenser and then the reagents stored inside the machine are released into the reaction vessel. 
the new mixture attained is carried out in either of the two areas, calorimeter or flow cell. If the mixture goes to the calorimeter, the absorbance can be measured there while it remains in the reaction vessel. In the case of flow cell, the mixture is sent to flow through the calorimeter to measure the absorbance. This way, the analyzer can calculate the relevant concentration. The third type of biochemistry analyzer is the dry chemistry analyzers. Dry chemistry analyzers comprise highly sensitive, multi-layered reagent coated slides instead of wet reagents. It requires only 10 to 50 milliliters of a sample. The results of dry chemistry analyzers are comparable to conventional wet chemistry analyzers. However, results differ for certain parameters among dry and conventional chemistry analyzers. Dry chemistry analyzers are compact and easy to operate, as these do not require storage space for reagents. There is no need for pipetting of reagents, and these are semi to fully automatic and require small volumes of samples. These factors have contributed to high adoption of dry chemistry analyzers in acute care settings, physician offices, etc. Dry chemistry analyzers such as blood glucose analyzers, blood cholesterol analyzers, and blood electrolyte analyzers have been widely used across the globe. There are a large number of dry chemistry analyzer manufacturers in the market. A major concern among the users is the high cost of test cartridges or slides compared to conventional chemistry analyzer reagents. Moreover, most of the analyzers work on a closed system principle with compatibility limited to their own reagent slides or cartridges. This was the simplified video on biochemistry analyzers. We will discuss about dry chemistry analyzers in detail in a separate video because the principle in measuring components differs from wet biochemistry analyzers. We will be looking more into analytical equipment in the upcoming videos. Do support us by subscribing to the channel, and if you like the content on this channel, please give us a thumbs up. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys in the next video.